I'd like to speak to you for a few minutes about the idea that evangelism is actually a team effort. And sometimes people feel like, well, I can't do evangelism because I can't do the whole process from start to finish. Well, here's what the Lord Jesus said. In this, the saying is true. This is in John chapter 4, verse 37. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And so you see this idea. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, or he who waters, but God who gives the increase. You get the idea there. If you put a plant, if you put a seed in the ground, but it's never watered, nothing will come of it. And likewise, if you water the ground, but there's no seed there, <laughs> nothing comes of that either. But through the work of God in germinating the seed, using the seed, using the moisture, using the soil, God brings the increase. And so we read in verse 8, Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And then this shocking statement in verse 9, For we are God's fellow workers. Oh man, isn't that fantastic? That we get to work with God. He could do the whole thing himself, you know. But he's committed to us the joy of spreading the seed, of watering it, sometimes with our own tears, and of watching God do what only he can do. I remember uh, quite some years ago, we were having a gospel effort in America, and a dear sister wrote to us from Ireland. She was uh, Professor David Gooding's secretary, uh, Miss Barbara Hamilton, and she wrote us a little note and told us a story that would encourage us. She said a young man had come into a little bookshop in Northern Ireland, and he said he was looking for a book about the Bible. Well, they said basically all these books are about the Bible. Specifically, what are you looking for? Well, he said, my mother just died recently. And on her deathbed, she pled with me to seek to find the answer in the gospel. And I have no idea where to look. He said, my mother was converted many, many years ago. There was a preacher who came and preached here. Uh, his name was Harold Paisley. Now, Harold Paisley had been born in Ireland, in Ballymena, and in 1966, I think, he had moved to Canada and lived in Vancouver on the far west side of Canada. But he had made many trips back to Ireland to preach the gospel. And on one of those journeys, this woman had been saved. And now here was her son years later, and he said, you know, uh, Mr. Paisley, I'm sure he's long gone now, but he was the man that pointed my mother to the gospel so she could understand it. And I want to understand it now. And the shopkeeper said, do you see that gray-haired gentleman standing over there in the shop? That's Mr. Harold Paisley. <laughs> he was back visiting in Ireland, and there he was in the little shop where the man was seeking for God. Now, the mother's prayers and the mother's pleadings had caused the young man to come to the shop. And here God had set up this beautiful situation where this young man would know that his soul was so precious that God would bring a preacher 5,000 miles to come and point him to the Savior. So let's remember this principle. It may be your prayers. It may be your testimony, your kindnesses to a person who's not saved. I remember years ago being, I think it was in Long Island, and there was a woman named Elizabeth came out to the meeting in deep soul trouble. 
and she wanted to be saved. We went in and sat down with her and an older woman. And afterwards, when we came out, here was a, a whole circle of people. And we sang, uh, oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. And we committed this dear woman to the Lord in prayer. But then I said, do you folks have some sort of connection with this woman? Do you know that as we went around the circle, a dozen people perhaps, every one of them had a, had a connection with that woman. One lady said, I went every week in to buy my milk at the local store because this is where she worked and I wanted to give a little word of encouragement to Elizabeth. Uh, one young girl said, I, I'm babysitting her children so she can come to the meeting. Two young men had been at the door to invite her along. And everyone around that circle had had a little part in the salvation of that dear woman. And so this is what the scripture says. We're workers together with God. One is sowing, one is reaping. One, as Paul says, planting and watering. And then God gives the increase. So be encouraged. Whatever your little part is, it's a big part. The seed will not come to fruition without the watering. The watering will be of no use without the seed. But in the end, none of it will be of any value unless God gives the increase. But we are workers together with him. So whatever your little part is, keep at it, Christian. And there's a day coming when the sowers and the reapers will rejoice together. <laughs>